Okay, welcome to another edition of the Weather and the Media Show. I'm your host, Jim Williams, and I will be with you for about an hour and a half, two hours tonight. We have special guest tonight, Chris Hollis from TropicalAtlantic.com, and he's on Skype on standby here, ready to go live. And if you hear some typing and whatnot, that's Chris getting prepped for the show and some other things, updating Tropical Atlantic and Cane Talk and all the other stuff that he does online. Um, honored to have Chris on the show tonight because I know I've had a lot of emails from people in the past that want to know more about Chris Hollis. He's done a lot of work behind the scenes at Hurricane City, and he's got some great programs he's working on right now. He's got the Hurricane Hunter Recon program in Google Earth. We have the models in Google Earth, and now he's working on a new program, well, two new things. He's got the models, uh, intensity forecast models graphically at Tropical Atlantic, and He's working on a program that will uh, figure out what the best performing models are in a particular storm. We'll get to more on that when Chris comes on in a little bit. It's Chris Hollis from Tampa, Florida. Chris, thank you for, for joining us tonight. And uh, I, I really do appreciate the work that you've done behind the scenes, uh, not only for um, your website, tropicalatlantic.com and Cane Talk, but you've also helped uh, build a little bit up in Virginia Beach, and you've done a little bit behind the scenes for Hurricane City. I really do appreciate that. But, Chris, welcome no aboard, and thanks for being here. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, were you born in Tampa? Yes, born and raised in Tampa. I lived here in the same house all my life. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, so now you're. Uh, so, what do you what do you do besides hurricane tracking? Like, uh, do you do you uh, have a regular job like I do, or how do you what, well, do, you, what do you do? For now, no. <laughs> uh, I took a break, a long break from college to uh, work on various uh, websites that I have, and uh, for now, that's the tropical website. And uh, in a month, I'll get back uh, to one of my money making websites, um, but. Uh, for now, just working on the tropical website during the hurricane season, it's uh, it's really easy to work on the site during the hurricane season because I'd be interested in the hurricanes anyway. Uh, and when the hurricanes are going on, or even invest going on, I can actually test uh, the software on my site to make sure everything's working. Right. Uh, all right. Um, first of all, you know, let me show people a map of where you live here. Um, this is uh, Chris. Uh, Chris is located in Tampa, Florida, which is on the west coast of Florida. Uh, he's northeast of St. Petersburg, uh, in, right off Tampa Bay. Now, here's a zoomed-in version of where you live. Now, Chris, I have this zoomed-in version of Tampa up on the screen with a little logo showing where your location is. Uh, I got this actually from the Hurricane City Cane Talk Board, where you've done a great job allowing people to put their location on a map to show them where, show the uh, regular users where everybody is located. And here's where Chris is, real close up to Tampa Bay. Now, Chris, how close are you to Tampa Bay? Uh, that is my exact location to the few feet. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that, that's uh, – I'm right on the bay practically. Uh, the canal is just just off the bay, but, I mean, we're 1,000 feet from the bay. I mean, we're, we're just – we're right on it practically. <laughs> well, so you're, you're um, going to probably – probably get out of there when uh, hurricanes come oh, in yeah. from the south uh, from the southwest correct or are you going to stay there uh, yeah we would have to get out for even a category one uh, it, unless it's a category one and it's expected to weaken that's the only time we would ha we might chance it uh, but yeah we, we're eight to nine feet above sea level uh, tropical storm Francis for example it rose at about four feet so it was almost about halfway to flooding us. <laughs> Uh, it'll come even really weak tropical storms. It'll actually come over the seawall, and uh, it's only four more feet till it actually floods part of my house. Uh, wow. Never happened before, um, so it's only a matter of time here in Tampa. Uh, we're a Category One flood zone, and uh, the bay is just—it's awful when it comes to surges. So, uh, uh, just hoping it doesn't happen, but just preparing in case it ever does. I know you had pictures up on your website um, showing how you prepared your home for the one coming from, I think it was Francis or Jean coming across. And uh, it, yeah, <laughs> uh, doing whatever we can. Here, you know, here it's, it's a surge problem. The surge is going to destroy everything um, probably in the house. So what we tried to do uh, for, for, I think we started maybe even with Charlie, and we just kind of, we left some of the stuff up some of the boards up all throughout 2004 um just enough that we for emergency exits to get out of the house we left a lot of boards up 
simply because we were getting hit all the time that, that year. Um, but I think for Charlie and some of the other storms, we, we tried to do everything we could to prepare. And um, that involved just trying to put up everything higher in the house so that if the wind didn't blow away the house, which, you know, I don't know, I don't know what kind of wind speed our house could sustain. It was built in, I think, 1980. Uh, so it's it's, you know, pretty old. So, I mean, how, how well it'll actually do when it comes to a hurricane, we don't know, but, uh, just in case the wind doesn't do any, any damage, just in case it's only the surge that we tried to put up all of our electronic devices, books, uh, family albums, try to put everything up higher so that if the house flooded, uh, maybe, you know, it would destroy the walls and some of the furniture, but it wouldn't get some of the, uh, the important, you know, family pictures, that kind of thing. Right. Do what we can. <laughs> All right. Well, so I guess we can't really rely on you to report on Skype uh, when, when hurricanes heading your way. I don't think you're going to be available. Yeah, unfortunately, no. That, that's the thing with the hurricanes. I probably really won't ever experience one because I'd have to go. <laughs> uh, yeah. The only time I've ever been around, like, I'll go outside is like a tropical storm. It's Francis, you know, moderate tropical storm winds. Uh, it, it wasn't, you know, that bad. Uh, several trees down in the neighborhood, but that you know that can happen in a thunderstorm. We've had more damage from uh, not tropical storms, but normal thunderstorms. From you know about how you make your living. I know you run HollisInnovations.com. dot com. I'm going to show your website here. Um, here is Hollis Innovations, the front page of your website. Uh, now this is uh, this is really what you do to make a living, and I guess this is what morphed into the the hurricane stuff. Or am I wrong on that? Is the, was were you into the hurricane stuff before this, or how did that all um, come together? No, I was actually uh, I started let's see doing websites probably I guess 1999, and uh, I started just basic HTML, just uh, kind of playing around with it, uh, and I was going to try and open an auction site, um, and uh, I worked on that for many many years. Um, unfortunately, eBay just grew too big, and uh, I gave that up. Uh, but uh, in about, uh, oh, I don't know, 2000, well, I guess it was 2004, I really started getting interested in hurricanes because Florida was just under constant attack that year. Right. Uh, so that really got me interested in them. And I can't remember exactly when I started working on the Tropical website. Initially, it was, I wanted to have a site full of bookmarks because a lot of people say, oh, I've lost my bookmarks um, from the, you know all the different hurricane websites. You know, they change their computer or something. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to start a site that had all sorts of different various bookmarks. And I think I might have I might have either started that in 2004 or maybe 2005. Um, Tropical Atlantic, I didn't register that until 2006, and I really started at 2006 season. Um, but 2005, I think I, had, I was putting various links together, uh, at that point, I was working on a website, uh, kind of finishing up on my auction site at that time. Like I said, I decided not to, uh, to do that one. And uh, about that time, uh, I would started developing a website for my association. That took about oh, six months or a year. Um, and then I was noticing that, you know, I had all this technology, a lot of experience doing a lot of different things um, regarding all sorts of different web technologies. And not a lot of people had seen it. Um, and I thought, let's see, what could I do that could be interesting to a lot of people and use some of the skills I've learned? And I got into, you know, a lot of the tropics in 2004, 2005, of course, you know, <laughs> that season, um, and really got interested in, in trying to think, okay, what, what can I do? Um, and I noticed, uh, you know, there was always the Vortex decoder online from uh, Florida Hurricane, and uh, I just I couldn't find any easy way to decode, you know, all sorts of the other types of messages. And, uh, and I realized that I could actually do that. And uh, so I started the long process of going one by one of trying to develop manual decoders where you take the text, put it into um, a field and, you know, manually decode it into something that you can actually interpret. Um, the actual human can, can read. Because um, a lot of the formats, especially the drop sound and reconnaissance code observations, are very complex. Uh, and I realized that I could actually decode those. And what was really important to decoding those was things like the National Hurricane Operations Plan that really went into depth about how to decode all those types of observations. Because, I mean, I'm not a weather professional. I mean, I'm very, very hobbyist. Uh, so what I wanted to do is make sure that any product I had to make sure that what I made available was 
was perfect, that, you know, that, 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 that it didn't have any errors or that I made every effort to make sure there was no errors. Uh, so I looked over the, the, the plans uh, and <laughs> over many, many hundreds of hours, I went through each one of those products. I forget which one I started with now, um, but the uh, four main products, eventually I started with the two, I think I started with the, uh, the NOAA and the um, Air Force uh, high density observation messages, which are the observations that come in about every 30 seconds usually, and they uh, come in a set of about 20. Okay, hold, hold on a second. Uh, I'm, I'm just a little curious how, how you actually came up with the, what kind, are you using a program to do this, or is this some kind of a oh, no. CGI it's, it's thing, all, or what are you doing? How it's you... all, it's, yeah, it's CGI, it's all manual. <laughs> uh, all how did you manual. learn that? Uh, like I said, I started with the auction site in, oh, I don't know, 2000, 2001 of developing it in CGI scripting. Perl programming is what I use. Uh, and developing that for four or five years, uh, I developed a message board for the auction site, which is actually the basis for Kane Talk. It actually started as I was going to have it for my auction site. And then I made uh, the message board for my uh, property owners association. And then eventually I adapted all of that and redesigned everything, and that became Cane Talk. Uh, so it really started in stuff, like I said, the auction site, which it just it never did go anywhere. But the technology I learned um, showed me that you know I could actually work with these products because there were only there were there were text products that I could download automatically, and as soon as I knew how I could do that, and I had the manual that told me how to do all the decoding. It was wow. only a matter of figuring it out. Uh, high density observations were easy. The drop sign messages and the reconnaissance code that gets it's not that it's difficult programming, it's just it's the, the logic of it is difficult. Uh, not that the programming was easy. We're talking about thousands of lines of code. Um, like the new model system we're working on, I think has like 12,000 lines of code so far. Um, and it's just, you know, it's, it's very in depth. Um, but it's just, I realized that. I could do it, and uh, it just it started slowly. Uh, like I said, I started one product at a time. Uh, I don't think I envisioned at the time that I would have as much as I do, yeah. um, because we're thousands, thousands of hours of yeah. work into it now. Uh, it just started slowly. I, I did one product, two products, three products, four products, and once I had the four, I decided, well, I've always wanted to put it in Google Earth. I wonder if I can do that. Uh, and then it was getting all those products and getting it all to work, and it, it was just uh, – it's, it's crazy. And now you've opened up a can yeah. of worms. And you, Now, are you getting a lot of publicity on the Internet? And I know you started out doing this, um, you know, working with Hurricane City kind of – you know, you were on the message board and you were sharing your products with everybody. Is this taking off on the Internet? Are there a lot of hurricane trackers out there that are linking to your stuff? And are they – is it like spreading on the message boards and everything at your products? Uh, there's a lo there's a lot of use of the recon system, especially. Um, a lot of people don't. Uh, well, the models. A lot of people do link to the models. But the thing about my site, in order to keep bandwidth low, and it's because it's the only way I know how to do it, uh, is that I don't have images. I don't create products with images that you can embed in a message board. And that's two reasons. One, I don't know how to do it. Um, the images. And second, interact. I, I like to create, uh, and all the products that I, what, I, what I try to start with is creating interactive products that it's not a single image where you see a bunch of spaghetti models or you see um, the path of a, a, a hurricane hunter mission. I wanted to give the opportunity to actually interact with these products rather than a single image where it's, it gets all cluttered. I wanted right. the ability to be able to select the models you want. Um, to view mission data and interact with the map. And Google Maps and Google Earth gives that people the opportunity, but they have to come to my website to do it. So a lot of times, a lot of the message boards, they'll like to you know embed a picture. And since my site doesn't do that, I don't get a whole lot of traffic, which is not too bad because uh, it doesn't swamp my site too, too much. Although I, I do get a lot of, a lot of traffic. Uh, uh, during, I think, uh, 2007, I think it was, I got like 50 gigabytes of traffic a month, which for not having video content is a lot. Um, but uh, and, it, and it's getting more and more popular. Um, a lot of times, though, and 
for, for the media, for like television media, uh, they, they use it a lot. Um, and I actually purposely tell them don't display my website on air. Why? So I don't get a lot of traffic. But, Why? Uh, well, it's just if I got swamped with traffic, I'd have to start to – paying a lot more for hosting. I only pay like 6 or $7 a month for my website, for all my websites combined. Well, uh, yeah, but you, you know, you can get advertisers and stuff like yeah. that. I, I know it kind of opens a can of worms, but uh, yeah. it's well, going to happen, the, you know, whether you want it yeah. to or not. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, eventually, you know, I might have to. Uh, it's good not having advertisements since I don't, it doesn't cost me a lot. If it did cost me a lot, I would have to have advertisements. Sometimes when I get swamped, uh, I think, uh-oh, I might have to finally get advertisements and pay more per month. Um, but luckily, I've been okay so far. Um, but uh, a, lot of, a lot of times, I, I talk to a lot of like, hurricane hunters, people that know of the Air Force. Um, I have uh, conversations with a lot of these different people that I probably wouldn't uh, be able to have as much if uh, I had ad- advertising. Um, because it's just, it, it's really nice to be able to talk uh, with all the different people. And it's just, it's not... I, just, I don't know if I was really a commercial en- entity that was trying to make money if uh, if I'd be able to still do that. But since they would only cover the hosting, they probably still would allow it. I mean, it's not like I'd never make money from it. It'd only be covering my costs. Well, uh, you know, you could, you know, you know you're, you're so talented with what you're doing online, you could actually uh, advertise Hollis Innovations and, and integrate that as one of your advertisers and, and do a lot of products behind the scenes for people that have websites that don't know how to do all this fancy stuff. And make yourself a living that way. You know, help you make a living through TropicalAtlantic.com because you've got some good skills there, and you're really expanding. And uh, a lot of people can implement this kind of stuff on their websites. Well, yeah, a lot of the because uh, I have a lot of uh, interest. A lot of my uh, my neighbors here. I built the uh, website for my association, and uh, now I have uh, a lot of uh, neighbors asking me to develop their websites. <laughs> Um, and unfortunately, I'm pretty backed up at the moment. Uh, I've got the Tropical Good. website, and then I'm going to have um, my website that'll make money. Um, I'll, it'll be an e-commerce website. I'm finally getting back kind of where it all started, my auction website that I worked on four or five years. I'm going to adapt that into an e-commerce site where I'll hmm. sell merchandise. Um, someone uh, gave me the opportunity to sell a lot of stuff, and that'll make me uh, quite a bit of money for my, my Tropical website. And uh, with that, I'll probably, you know, say, hey, you know, buying something from here, you know, funds my tropical website and that kind of thing. Uh, and that I hope to get done soon. Yeah. Uh, working on the tropical website now. But uh, so that, that'll that provide uh, some uh, yeah. financing. For tropical you got website. to because it's going to take so much of your time when things get hot and heavy in the height of the <laughs> season. You, you got to you got to get a little something out of it for your time. I know. I, I know. No, I've been struggling with this site for ten years, and it's it's uh, it just takes a lot of your time. And I'm running a, a paving up business as well, so it's really it just it's taxing. You know, it's just every day during the season you got to really um, you know hustle to get everything uploaded and done and, and on, in a timely manner because a lot of people are relying on that information on the internet. Um, but well, that's what's, it, it's great about my site. I try to make it automated as yeah. much as possible, but it, it's always. It, something goes wrong, uh, especially with um, the planes. I have to watch it a lot of times because they'll change something or sometimes it'll be just a little bit off the message and I'll have to go into my site and code it, recode something and uh, so that the plane will be okay. Uh, just like July 15th, the Hurricane Hunters changed something uh, and I really didn't know how it was going to how it was gonna work because there wasn't enough um, uh details in the National Hurricane Operation Plan. So it wasn't until the plane actually went into a storm that, oh, it's not working. And so I had to uh, recode it real quick. And uh, then it was another plane went in. I had to recode a little bit more because it changed a little bit more. You had them flying um, in Africa somewhere? <laughs> uh, well, it's just, it was like rather than 999 to uh, to represent something that's missing, they they decided to use slashes, and that broke my site. Uh, uh, it's just really little things. Yeah. Um, because with my site, so that I make sure that I have everything as accurate as possible, I have everything so that the message has to be perfect. Uh, so right. if there's anything wrong with it, my site will reject it, and then I'll have to worry about you know trying to to, to recode it. Uh, just being very meticulous and trying to uh, make sure that nothing ever gets decoded wrongly. Uh, but every once in a while, yeah, there will be actual coordinates at zero north or zero zero on the globe because uh, sometimes the hurricane hunters, 
they just do that. They have coordinates there for some reason accidentally and the track go there. So if you ever see the track going there, it's, it's the hurricane hunters that, you know, I just, I try not to edit the data that from the storm in any way. So sometimes you'll get actually something that's way off. Right. Uh, but, uh, all right. Now I, I have a picture of cane talk up on the, on the pic on the, uh, image here. Um, is it center? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's on the screen. Um, that is, um, picture of the front page of cane talk.com. Now, I, I came to you and asked you to do this because we were using boardhost.com for the old message board, and I, I felt like we needed to have this outside of, of boardhost because there were several reasons. There were limitations on the amount of posts, I believe, and there was uh, not the, the un- inability to contact people. or to, There was some sort of an issue. I can't remember what it was, but you basically went and built this thing from scratch, correct? Well, like I said, well, I've kind of ended up developing a lot of a lot of it from scratch because I wanted to. The technology behind it uh, is really more advanced than the one I built originally for one of my websites, and then eventually for my uh, my neighborhood association. Uh, this one, to to handle a busy site, it really needed a complete redesign uh, in order to be able to uh, not crash. <laughs> Uh, the HTML, all the HTML pages uh, to generate those rather than trying to dynamically load a text file each time. I had to really rethink everything with this with this board to make it work uh, so that it was the least demanding on the server as possible. Uh, so yeah, I, I did have to end up, uh, it took about six months, I guess. Uh, like I said, I had a lot of technology already, like the advanced search engine, which took me many, many months. That was already developed pretty much completely from previous websites. But everything else pretty much uh, was pretty much from the ground up. Uh, just all the little various features that needed to be for Cane Talk, uh, the map, uh, the chat room, all, all the different things, uh, trying to get that uh, specifically for a, a major site. Because all the sites as previously weren't major. They were just little tiny sites or it never got much use. Uh, so I needed to make sure that uh, June 1st it worked, but uh, when the first major hurricane came along, that it all didn't come crashing down. Uh, yeah, it, so works. To... It, wor- it works like a charm. It's working really well. The, uh, it, Chris, how did you, how did you find uh, Hurricane City? What, did, did you find it through the message board, the old message board, or did you find Hurricane City and then find the message board? Is that how you got on the Internet following the tropics? or How did that all come about? I'm not really sure. Um, in 2000. Four, uh, I guess it was probably Charlie. I probably just Googled something related to uh, hurricanes. Uh, I can't probably probably through Hurricane City. Probably I was probably looking for information on Charlie. Uh, probably because uh, that's really when I started getting interested in hurricanes uh, when Charlie came around. And then that season was just constant. Uh, I don't think I actually registered. I don't know if I actually registered to the message board until maybe 2005. Um, I think previously uh, they allowed, you know, uh, you didn't have to log in. So I think I posted um, for a little bit, um, but I don't think I actually registered until like 2005. But probably through Hurricane City, I probably just Googled it, um, looking at information on Charlie probably. Uh, and, uh, that's probably how I found it. Uh, but, yeah, Hurricane City really got – that's what got me interested in, in the tropics, uh, following the message board uh, and uh, – you know, just 2004, they were all seemingly aimed at Florida, and then 2005, you know, they were just everywhere. Um, so that really got me interested in the tropics, which is why by 2006, I was ready with Tropical Atlantic and started running the models and started really, really working on the decoder uh, for the re- reconnaissance. Um, but uh, uh took a while to get that started, but uh, yeah, 2004, 2005 was when it really got started for me. Before then, I just, I didn't follow hurricanes. Uh, I couldn't tell you anything about 2003 or prior. Um, uh, only thing I can remember from Andrew, I was very young. Uh, I was like uh, nine years old, so I got a day off from school. I mean, hurricanes, I just, I don't know, growing up, just, we just never thought about them. I, yeah. I it's it's usually uh, when when people first get into it is when they they experience a threat or something and that's usually what gets them into this. Yeah, I mean Tampa has been very lucky, uh, lucky for so so long. Uh, so it's just it was Charlie, which you know, unfortunately for Punta Gorda, um, but luckily for us, you know, it's you know we just 
we got a break on that one. Now, what what about your family and friends? Are they thinking, okay, you've gone off the deep end with this hurricane stuff? Are, are they starting to ask you a lot of questions every time there's a threat out there? Are your neighbors starting to get more interested? Yeah. How does that all work out? Yeah, I, I get a lot of questions. Uh, my neighbors, they, they get pretty cool, too. Uh, um, lots of they're like, yeah, you need to make money from it. Um, but uh, but it but I do it is really cool, um, especially when I can I, you know I see it on TV, um, or you know I can say well hey you know those are my models on TV right now, yeah, um, it's, it's really cool. cool. Yeah. Uh, so you know it's just because uh, a lot of the local stations uh, use them. So I mean I can uh, I can point it out. Uh, although I had some family down the other day and they didn't use my models um, on the one day, uh, so I was like oh because I wanted to point them out while I had some family down like those are the models, but uh, but I just showed it on, on my website. Um, but yeah, it, it's really neat, um, especially you know uh, just all the different people who use them, the hurricane hunters um, that use them. That's you know that say, hey, I really like your site. Um, That's cool. that, they, yeah, well, I, I, all the time I get messages um, from hurricane hunters um, saying either their family tracks the plane at home, so they can, you know, my kids track it, so I can find out you know where their father is. All right, um, so. Now, you've got to uh, coax them into putting a webcam or something on those planes so we can watch them uh, in action there uh, or something. You know, do something that they can interact with well, us on the that's, Internet. That's actually funny. Uh, the NOAA Hurricane Hunters were actually uh, – they – apparently, I think they do broadcast live video. And they were actually going to try and put it on my site. Um, but unfortunately, I can't handle the bandwidth. Uh, I wish they'd find some way because it would be really neat um, to have a, a live video – uh, on uh, it only be on the NOAA Hurricane Hunters, but have the live video, especially on UStream or something, be yeah. really neat to see. Um, but uh, I don't know if it's, it's live or if it's always available. Uh, I know the big files are available. Uh, it's just they gave me some of the stuff on how to decode it. I just uh, it was just too complicated. I couldn't right. figure it out. All right, uh, um, Chris, but, uh, let, let's go ahead and get to your site. Let's. Uh, I'm going to pull your site up here and. Uh, this is how at least I navigate your site. I'm not sure how other people do it, but I usually look at the very top where you have low invest 91L up at the top, and you click that link, and it takes you to the uh, uh, zoomed-in information, the, uh, the date, where it is located, um, and then you can choose one of these three options here. You have the uh, full plots for the Atlantic Basin. You have the spaghetti plots for the Atlantic Basin, and then you have the uh, Google Map plots. Um, which I use on the tropical update videos from time to time. And let me go ahead and open. Uh, let me go ahead and op- open up the uh, Google Map one, so I don't have to open up uh, Google Earth right now. But uh, here's a, a typical map that you have when you click on that link at the fr- on the top of your front page. There, Invest 91 has all the models listed here on the right hand side of the uh, screen, and you can choose, like for example, the BAM model, and there it is. It, it plots out where the the BAM is taking this, and this is uh, west-northwest, and then turns it north uh, in response to a weakness over the West Atlantic. Uh, BAM D, which would be for a more stronger system, takes it uh, more further west towards Puerto Rico. Uh, shallow BAM model, which is for a shallow system, takes it just north of Puerto Rico. But anyway, you can click any of these models on the right-hand navigation bar on this page and, and pull up the models and. Now, Chris, I understand you're working on a program. Let me go back. Oh, here it is. Uh, right at the top of this page, you see where it says, Try out our new live model and best track system currently in alpha testing. Uh, when you click on this, it shows you the, uh, the models. Uh, there's the map of the current position of Invest 91L out in the East Atlantic, that little red L on the map. And then you scroll down, and uh, it'll give you the options for choosing wind speed or pressure. And this shows you the models that are forecasting what the wind speeds are going to be in the future. So let's let's open this up. And this is also something I've been using on the Tropical Update videos. But uh, there it is. Now, how in the heck do you get all this data to show up on a graph like this? Well, that's actually pretty uh, easy. Um, like I said, I don't know how to work with images. Um, but see, if that was just an image, that would be very uh, cluttered, especially for uh, you know when there's a whole bunch of models. Because um, at the bottom, you'll, you'll see the late cycle models um, below that, uh, and uh, those are the early cycle, aren't they? Let's see. Uh, and, the early cycle. Yeah, uh, and then below that, you'll see the late cycle. Yeah, the late cycle, the aviation um, ensembles and whatnot. Yeah. When there's a lot of models, yeah, for example, the late cycle there, if you had an image of that, it would be extremely difficult to determine what's what. 
Um, so what I do is, and because I know how to do it, um, is use Flash, uh, which is pretty easy to work with. Um, and what I just I do is uh, I just which is uh, I don't know how you how you, you used to do the tropical update videos using the Flash program, uh, but what I do is I have a graph pre-made uh, where each time I process all of the uh, text data from the National Hurricane Center's models, and once when I process it all for Google Earth and Google Maps, um, I have all that data. I'm processing through it anyway. Uh, so while I'm doing that, all I do is I take the the, uh, the wind speeds um, and the model names. I gather that, and for the flash diagram, all I do is just have a list of all of that text information, and I just load it into the flash diagram because the flash diagram never changes. It's only the text data that goes into it that changes. So that each time, it's always going to load the uh, the latest data, and um, it's just really simple to do because I don't have to update the do you image. Have to do that manually? Oh no no no! It all automatically. Yeah, it's automatically um, just instantly. As soon as the models are available, it's plotted. Uh, that's what's great, especially, especially this part of the site. Um, all of it happens um, very automatically. Well, yeah, everything that, is fantastic. supposed to happen. Um, and uh, the new system, which I've been designing for years, um, it's just finally one of the local stations wanted to uh, use the models on, on their website. And I was helping them with that, and I just I had all of this, uh, especially these the intensities on a diagram. I had this done three years ago. Um, it's just it wasn't uh, until recently that I finally that okay I'll finally get it out there uh, and started working on it in the last two months. And uh, eventually that'll replace the old system because there's so much more information in the new system. Every model now in Google Earth has wind swath data. Um, you can view the uh, the, uh, the actual swath of winds expected for every single model. Wow. Um, you can view the previous storm histories, and it's all archived. You can pull up any archive, uh, any model data, uh, best track data um, for this syst- for any storms this year. And eventually, when I get the system um, better designed, uh, I'll recreate past data. Um, for like 2005 and that kind of thing. So you'll be able to pull up model data, any kind of model data for major storms throughout uh, for the last 20 years probably. Um, whatever they have model data. A lot of pre- older model data I won't be able to add because the Hurricane Center doesn't have it available publicly. Um, so eventually I'll have all of that. Um, but, uh, but for now it's just the old system is reliable, so I got that running in the new system. The new system, by the way, runs for the uh, East Pacific and Central Pacific. Oh, really? Okay. As well. So right now you see there's um, an invest near Hawaii um, that I'm tracking, although it's only got like a 10% chance, I think, now. I got an email in here. By the way, I'm going to put up the email address and the phone number. You can call in, and uh, Chris will be happy to answer any questions you might have about what he does at Tropical Atlantic. This is from Paul McNamara. I've been listening to you and Chris Uh, Online tonight, Jim, on your Hurricane City site, and the screen with Chris is coming in real good. Lots of interesting chat on the technical side tonight. The audio is excellent. Uh, The double echo only occurs if a user clicks once on your live stream uh, screen. Uh, So please let Chris know that I am really impressed with his technical know-how. I have been tuning into your shows for two years and began doing so around the... the, uh, time of hurricane charlie so that's just what you said chris Mm -hmm. i was looking for hurricane sites and saw yours on the list of the search engines and clicked on it and then signed up right away been listening ever since and appreciate receiving the show notifications in advance uh, which is a great service keep up the great work and this is from paul in uh, ontario canada listening in tonight Uh, actually there's chris on the hurricane hunter aircraft in tampa And, again, Chris uh, has great respect from the hurricane hunters. They they really love what Chris does with Tropical Atlantic. Uh, There is the phone number and email, jim at hurricanecity.com. Hey, Jim, do you hear us? Yep. uh, Yeah, uh, go ahead. Hi, Jim. uh, Tony up at Harrison. How are you tonight? I'm doing good, uh, Tony. Can you hear him okay, Chris? Yeah, I got you guys. Yeah, I can hear him a little bit. Ask ask my question and then hang up the phone and let Chris answer. Chris, I was just curious, do you have the uh, site mirrored? Or can you take a lot of volume as far as the Internet hits? Because I can see this is going to become very popular, your site, as well as Jim, when we do have a formidable hurricane or tropical weather threat. Uh, you know how we get, uh, the Internet can get overloaded uh, so uh, simple with people, a lot of hits on the Internet site. Just curious what kind of volume 
uh, you can take on this site. And uh, I want to congratulate you with having these uh, this uh, hurricane recon data and model data. And, uh, Jim, you guys keep up the good work there at Hurricane City. And I'll uh, stand by let Chris answer that. You guys have a great night. Tony, thanks again for calling in. And we'll be in touch this year. You might get something up your way. All right. I guess we, we got them off the line. All right, uh, let's, uh, Chris, you want to go ahead and answer that? Or uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not really sure uh, how much, uh, how many hits my site could actually take. Uh, it's kind of, I wouldn't know until it happens um, whether it would uh, crash. Um, 655,000 hits on, let's see, what day was that? But uh, let's see, like Hurricane City is one of the most popular uh, sites that links to it. Um, although this year I noticed um, uh, some of the government is actually the top user, uh, which is pretty cool. Mm. Yeah, uh, that's, that's good. So is there a caller there? Yes. Hi, gentlemen. It's uh, Bill Phillips calling from Virginia Beach. All right. Bill's on the line. Uh, go ahead, Bill. Um, hi, hi, Chris. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, thanks, Jim, as always. Um, wh wh again, what did you – could you um, go into your college experience a little more? You, do you have any, maybe, maybe I'm, um, do you have any computer background? Um, what kind of classes did you take in college? If any, it sounds like you did most of this from scratch. And if so, it's, it's, it's kind of amazing to me as I, I watch uh, you describe what you do and see what you do because your products are a great help to Jim and myself as we, um, uh, you know, stream recon the reconnaissance data and, and different um, products. Um, as for college, exp I, I, well, I never did take any computer classes in college. Uh, this was all just self-taught um, over the years, um, just, uh, just learning from scratch the basic HTML and just 10, 11 years of computer experience. Uh, in college, the problem was I took, I did about four years of college. The problem was I was at the point where I took the required classes and I had to pick a major. <laughs> and after four years, I, I was taking all sorts of different classes in so many different fields. Uh, I took a weather class at one point. I took anything from like um, anthropology to media to psychology um, to architecture, to business. I mean, so many different things. Uh, I just realized I wanted to continue with my computer stuff for a while. Uh, so I took a long, long break from college. Uh, eventually I'll probably go back, but, uh, it's just, uh, I couldn't find anything of that really interested me enough to really study it. Uh, so I thought, well, let me just see what the computer, you know, allows me to do. Um, and hopefully the tropical sites um, and eventually the e-commerce site I'm developing, the website I developed, uh, my neighborhood association, and Cane Talk, all of that will give me experience down the road um, if I de de decide to continue with um, something in the computer field or if I decide to do something else. Um, it'll just give me some experience, you know, if I do web design as a hobby. I'm, I'm interested in all sorts of different things. I love photography. Um, I love to take pictures. I mean, there's just so many different things that I love to do. Um, that just, I just, I don't know what I'll end up actually uh, picking though. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, All right, we got we got another email here. Uh, hey Jim, thanks for the live show. And Chris, I love your Google Earth models. They're great. I found out about your website after seeing the Hurricane Hunter models in Google Earth used on NBC Two and WBBH TV. Uh, keep up the good work, and that's from Paul in Denver. Where was that? Denver? In Denver. Uh, it, he might have been using the local. WBBH sounds like something local down here in South yeah. Florida. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, that's neat. Huh. Yeah, because outside of uh, my local viewing area, I don't know who know. I don't know who actually uses the plots because they're available to anybody. Uh, so I don't actually uh, know who uses the plots. Uh, other than locally, so it's kind of neat to hear that other stations are uh, actually using the data. Because, uh, like I said, I just I don't have any way to uh, actually know. Uh, that is kind of neat. Well, you know what? Just uh, don't don't tell them not to mention your site, though. I I'd let let it let it fly, and if you have to upgrade one level, you know, go for it. I I say go for it. You know, get all the publicity you can get. Uh, here's another email. Good evening, Jim and Chris. Um, a quick two-part question. 
What are your brief thoughts on 91L tonight, and what are your, um, I'm reading this from far away here, uh, your primitive expectations on activity for those final four months of the season. Thank you so much. I love listening to your, uh, watching, visiting your website. Have a good night. Regarding uh, John Yell Vargas in Miami. Um, uh, wait, Chris, you want to go first on 91L and yeah. what your thoughts are for the well, future? Well, I haven't, uh, I've been working on the model error thing, so I haven't had a lot, a uh, chance to look at the charts a whole lot. Um, but, Typical scientist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> too busy to actually pay attention uh, well, yeah, to the storm. That's the thing. I, I, I'm usually too busy working on my site to actually learn a whole lot about hurricanes. It's it's annoying sometimes, but it, fun it's fun. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, the thing about 91L is, though, uh, it seems like there's going to be the upper level low uh, north of Puerto Rico that might give it a lot of shear across 10 north now. Um, but uh, I just I don't know if it's going to miss the islands yet. Uh, I, I'm not buying into that quite yet. You know, my wisdom is telling me Caribbean because it's early in August and there there tends to be a strong Azores high this time of the year. But the models are saying otherwise. The European models taking it right near Puerto Rico and into the Bahamas and then weakening it. You're working on a program to show the best performing models. When is that data going to become available? In fact, I'm working on that right now. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let me go ahead and send you a link. Uh, I'll send you. I'll send you one link now. Hold on, just a second here. Um, so, what do you do? You have anything going uh, social networking? At, uh, uh, yeah, I do the Twitter uh, for now. Um, uh, just c- kind of out of necessity. The Twitter. Um, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> tweets. The whole twitter thing and and having that uh eventually i might automate that uh there's a way to do that um and i might do that eventually um for anything uh, like youtube i just really don't have any content for youtube i do have a youtube channel um youtube.com slash tropical atlantic um and all it has is some of the hurricane hunter videos that uh, uh hurricane hunter gave me uh, uh when i went there to visit they gave me a private tour uh he gave me um, a whole bunch of video and thousands and thousands of pictures from the Hurricane Hunters. I have my site, actually, um, to get to the pictures. It's tropicalatlantic.com slash NOAA hyphen AOC. And you can see just an example image. Go down a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, there we go. And you'll see just something what it'll look like. Uh, like I said, it's almost ready. I thought I was hoping I was going to have it by the broadcast tonight, but the table isn't working at the moment. Yep. Or just go to the home page. Uh, I'm there. Okay, go down a little bit. Um, scroll down. Uh, a little bit more. You'll see a chart. A oh, yeah, bit. there we go. That's what it'll look like. I know you can't see. I put a poor quality example because at the time I wasn't sure how well it was working yet. <laughs> um, and uh, this, for example, is actually East Pacific Tropical Depression 6. would happen um, uh, like last month. So stuff. Um, is evolving as I design it. Like, okay, that doesn't work, so I'll do this instead. Um, so that's still very much in progress. Um, and also, eventually, I'm going to do with the intensity uh, models or the intensity graph and the pressure graph. You see, I'm going to put them out to seven days. Right now, they're only five days. Uh, the model error will go out to 174 hours. Um, let's see, where's 182? I forget now. Something. Now, what do you, uh, th- you, now you said this is all automated. So basically, if you have to evacuate, uh, this is going to people can expect these products to continue um, uploading. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that, that'll be the good thing, unless something goes wrong. Uh, but yeah, it'll, what, if, it'll well, be... what if your house goes underwater? Oh no, the, the, these are hosted elsewhere. Something something else goes wrong. Um, this is hosted. I forget if they're Texas or Ohio or something. The data center, but everything you see generated that's generated by my host. Uh, all the programs I run. Uh, I set a cron task, which is something that runs every so often. Um, for the uh, model data, it runs every half hour to okay. check for data. And if there's new data, it processes it all. Um, for the NOAA uh, or for the uh, Hurricane Hunters, every 10 minutes I check for data throughout the year. Every 10 minutes, it, it downloads 12 different files. Um, and when something's really, really active and there's a lot of planes going out in the storm every minute, I'll download 12 files. But, uh, but, uh, I'm glad to make that all available. So, yeah, that's me uh, in the uh, the cockpit of, uh, let's see, one of the P3s, uh, the jet. Uh, you can see back there. 
Um, but uh, yeah, it was really neat to have a private tour of all the the uh, different features of those planes. Uh, very very cool to actually see where all the data that, that I've generated. Uh, or that I've I've processed through my system to see where it's actually generated. Uh, you can see the actual computer screens and where they send it out, and then it sends out. And you know, a few minutes later, my site has it decoding it and has it in Google Earth. Uh, just a uh, really neat to see where it all comes from. Um, yeah. To, toward the planes, um, just a really interesting experience. Uh, all right. Well, Chris, uh, we appreciate you coming on tonight. Uh, get, good to get to know oh, no you a problem. little bit and how you do all this. And I'm still a little confused about it, but uh, I guess it, you know, be, to, oh, you're free to explain all the I, details. Be- I'm, I'm confused myself. If something ever went wrong with the drops on decoder, it would take me a day probably to figure out how I designed it. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah, it's the, the processing involved in some of that. Looking back at it now, I wouldn't do it again. Um, uh, thankfully, it's all done. Uh, I just hope they don't ever come out with a new product. Uh, I like them tweaking the old products. That way I can just make a little tiny change. If I had to actually uh, go back and figure out how to do a whole new product, that would not be fun. Yeah. Um, Thanks for coming on tonight. Good luck with TropicalAtlantic.com. You do an excellent job. I'll be leaning on your site a lot this year. I'm sure a lot of people will. So uh, best of luck to you, and uh, take care in Tampa. Well, you too. Thanks for having me. All right, Chris. Have a good night. You too. All right.